Okay, welcome to our chapter on mitosis and how cells divide. And of course, I have to have more nerdy comics in here to make you um, giggle. Um, so it is kind of funny that in biology, multiplication and division really do mean the same thing, right? This cell is dividing, but it's actually multiplying because it's creating another cell. Okay, so that's the process we're going to talk about today. Um, <clears throat> so if you have your notes, why do cells divide? Okay. There's going to be three times that cells are going to divide. When you're developing, so when you're actually, you know, becoming, you know, from a zygote to a physical being, um, when you're growing, anytime you're growing, and also when you're repairing things. So those are going to be the three times you see this happen. Now, prokaryotes and eukaryotes are going to do the division differently. So prokaryotes, remember those are bacteria and things like that is way simpler because they don't even have a nucleus or any of that kind of stuff so it's just a lot easier so what's gonna happen is I think it's easier if I just showed you a picture oh I forgot about that one that one is hilarious <laughs> I'm such a dork okay um, <clears throat> so this is binary fission right here so what's going to happen is you're going to have the bacterial cell and then all their DNA is inside right so at the origin of replication what's going to happen is the DNA is going to start copying itself. So you can see it's kind of splitting apart, and as it does that, it's going to make a copy. Now, that process is actually pretty complex, but we're going to just accept that it's just making a copy right now. Enjoy this. This is a happy time. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to completely split and make two copies, right? So one is the um, original, and then you've got the other one, right? Um, and you're going to have each set of the copy DNA go to either side of the cell. And then eventually what's going to happen is a cell is going to accumulate proteins here in the center and it's going to pinch and eventually split into two. That's it. So copy the DNA, goes to either side, cell pinches into two. That's how binary fission works. Now with eukaryotes, it's going to be a little bit more involved than that, but enjoy the prokaryotes. Okay, so um, that's all of that right there. Let's talk about chromosomes. So you've seen chromosomes before, like you, they're usually drawn as like an X, right? And so most eukaryotic organisms have about 10 to 50 chromosomes, but it totally can vary. Plants have crazy rules, insects have crazy rules of chromosomes, so they're crazy. So as far as humans go, we have 46 chromosomes, and they're arranged in 23 pairs. What I mean by that is, if I get out my little drawing board here, when you were a separate egg and a sperm, which did happen, um, <clears throat> so you had the sperm that had 23 chromosomes from your dad, and then you had the egg, which had 23 chromosomes from your mother, then those came together to form the zygote, which has 46 chromosomes. Okay, So you have two sets of each type. There's 23 types of chromosomes is how you can think about it. Okay, going back to your notes, um, on your chromosome is going to be where your genes are located, and your genes are going to be composed of DNA. So that's how it kind of works out. Um, if you don't have the perfect number of chromosomes, you could have major development issues. There are some chromosomes that you can handle having an extra one or something like that, but most of the time it can be completely detrimental for development. So the number of chromosomes is very, very, very important. Okay, so we say chromosomes are composed of chromatin. And what chromatin is, is DNA and protein. So DNA, as you know, is that long strand. Um, and then what's going to happen is it's going to coil to fit into such a small spot <clears throat> in your nucleus. So what's going to happen is if you see this picture um, here, you see how the chromosome looks kind of fuzzy? So what we're going to do is get a little bit more into detail here. All right, so here's our fuzzy chromosome down here. It looks just like that previous picture, okay? Now we want to get into why it looks so fuzzy. So if we are going to look at this little section right here highlighted in green, it would look like this, and all of those green squigglies are going to be DNA, okay? If we are going to look at a little section of that DNA right here, you can see that it's just kind of, you know, more coiling that's happening there. If we were going to get even closer and just looked at this little piece right here, you can see that the DNA is wound around these little blue things right here. Those are called histone proteins. Okay, um, So here's a closer look, and then there's your original DNA. So what happens is, um, about every 200 nucleotides, the DNA is going to wrap around eight histone proteins. Okay, So if we said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this here would form what we call a nucleosome. 
Okay, then what's going to happen is that's just going to keep coiling on itself and keep coiling on itself until it actually forms these kind of loop de loops that you see here, and those are going to be called solenoids. Okay, so you have your DNA, it's negatively charged. These histone proteins are positively charged, so it's going to get attracted and wrap around them. When you have um, eight um, histones surrounded by 200 nucleotides that's going to be where you have your nucleosome and then the higher order coiling that happens is a solenoid and that's how you end up with that fuzzy looking chromosome so in the next video we'll get into a little bit more about chromosome number and how all of that kind of stuff happens